Today, we're looking at an easy way to find memory errors, bugs in your code quickly and effortlessly. I guess that's what easy means. Okay, let's take a look. Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're talking about memory errors, which are probably the bugs that give new programmers the biggest headaches. I mean, maybe not all memory errors. I have talked about seg faults and how if you have a debugger handy, those are super easy to sort out. I'll link down in the description if you missed that video, if seg faults are still giving you a headache. But today, I wanted to talk about memory corruption because those bugs can be really, they can cause a lot of pain if you don't know what to do about them. So just to be clear, a memory corruption error or bug is when your program tries to read from or write to memory that it has no business reading from or writing to. Basically, it's memory that it shouldn't be accessing. And sometimes this does result in a seg fault, but not always. Sometimes it just messes things up and gives you weird, hard to explain behaviors that just confuse people. Now, if you've been following this channel for a while, you know that I made a video a while back on Valgrind and how you use Valgrind to find, to get insights into some of these problems. So that's always an option for you. But today I want to look at how you can have your compiler basically do it for you automatically. And you get this almost for free. So today I'm going to show you how this works with a really simple example. But before we dive into it, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you who help support this channel, especially those who support the channel on Patreon, where you can get access to source code and my monthly office hour, and also those that send me ideas for content requests of things you'd like to see. I really do appreciate it. I do look at the comments as much as I can. And specifically, I just want to mention that this topic was requested by Tuzi. I really hope this is helpful for your students. So anyway, yes, thank you all for being here. Now let's jump into the code. Okay, so we're starting out today with a simple, there's a simple empty C program here, not even hello world. By the way, while I'm showing this in C, this example will work in C++, it should work just the same. But so let's come in here and make a memory error. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna make an array. Okay, so I'm gonna something like this, something like let's make an array of some characters, let's call it some chars, and then let's have some length, right? So we'll call it num letters. And then up here, let's let's maybe fill this with the lowercase alphabet, the English alphabet. So we'll say uh, pound define um, letters and we'll pound define it to 26. And then we can come in here and let's make a little for loop and let's go up to num letters. And then in here, we'll just say some chars and make the ith element of this array equal to the lowercase letter a plus i, okay? So this is just going to fill this array with A, B, C, D, all the way up to Z. So nothing too complicated about that. But then if we come in here, let's say that we wanted to print out one of these elements, right? So we say an element and then percent C. So let's print out a character from this. And let's just say that we happen to have a bug in our code and so we try to get the 50th character in this array. Of course, the array is not that big. So this should give us some at least strange results. It might seg fault. I don't think it's going to seg fault for reasons relating to virtual memory paging and stuff like that. I've mentioned those a little bit in previous videos. If you want to hear more about virtual memory paging and why sometimes memory errors seg fault and sometimes they don't, then maybe we can talk more about that in the future. But for today's purposes, it's enough to just say that this probably won't seg fault. It probably will just give me garbage. Now, also, I have a make file up here, really simple, just like the other make files you've seen in my other programs. So nothing too fancy, nothing to worry about. If you haven't seen make before, do check out my make videos. But so let's come down here and let's just try to compile this program. If I come down and run make, uh, you'll notice my virtual machine has a clock skew. Just disregard basically this and this. We're just looking at this compile line right here. But so if we come in here and we run it, then you're going to see, well, okay, that was a little strange, right? Maybe. We don't really know what we got. And I'm going to add a new line in here. Um, so we will return back to the beginning. But basically, we're getting something that isn't A through Z, right? It's probably either a zero or it might be a non-printable character or who knows. The point is, it's not one of the letters. This is a bug, but it's just showing up as like just not having a character there. Now, I was actually surprised here. Sometimes compilers are smart enough to look at this and say, because this is a statically allocated array, they can come in here and say, yeah, this is not going to fit. So I actually thought, depending on the compiler we use, if I came in here and used clang, I think I might actually get a warning. Let's to see. Um, yeah, so Clang will notice that, hey, this is, you're going out of bounds. So this is a bit of an issue. So let's just, just to make it a little pickier, let's come in here and instead of GCC, let's use Clang. Okay, so now we can 
make clean. And okay, so now we get the warning. Okay, so it's smart enough to say, hey, yeah, this, this element 50 is problematic. But what if we came in here and what if it was, we had a variable in between? So we had something like int idx equals 50, right? So this is just an integer. And then in here, we are now using the index is gonna be idx. This makes it a bit harder for the compiler to always figure out what's going on. And so if I come in here, now you see that that warning is nowhere to be seen. Okay, so now we don't get the warning even using Clang, and so that's annoying. But that's where this comes in real handy is if I wanna come in here when I'm compiling things, so I can come in here and let's just take, let's just take this compile line right here. Okay, if I come in and in this compile line, I add a new compiler flag and I just say F sanitize equals address, okay? So what this is doing is this saying, I want you to sanitize the addresses. I want you to check addresses to make sure that they are okay. So now if I compile this, okay? And we can add it to our make file, but I was getting tired of these warnings. So I'll add it later on. In fact, now let's add it right now. We just come up here to C flags and put F sanitize equals address, just so you can see kind of where I'm going with this. But now something interesting happens when I run my example. Okay, so now you can see we got a bunch of output. And what happens is it's very similar to the output you get with Valgrind, which is an external tool. But this, what this is doing is actually compiling the checks right into my program. And so now you can see it comes in here and it says, okay, there was this read of size one. So one byte at this particular address, which you know may not look like much to you, but once you get used to things, but once you get used to programming a long time, you might look at this and say, oh, that looks like a local variable. But even if you don't notice it, it is going to give you the stack frame right here. Now. It is going to tell you information like this is on the stack, which thread it's running on, and the offset from a particular frame. Okay, so this is all being produced by a tool called Address Sanitizer, which is basically putting a bunch of code into my code, which is checking all of my memory accesses. And then also down here, it actually gives me a what's called a it's a it's a summary of the shadow memory. Now, I don't have time in this video to dig into shadow memory. Let me know if you'd like to see a video on shadow memory and, and what, what this actually is saying. But really what it's doing is it's giving me a map of my address space and where my invalid access actually occurred. And then down here, it's got a key that that gives information about how this memory is being used. You know, what is this region that's being messed up? And that can often give you insight into what my program did that was wrong. So that's pretty cool. Basically, we didn't have to do anything except change how we compile our program. We just had to add this sanitize equals address option to the compiler and everything just happened right now. So that's really cool. But keep in mind that nothing or almost nothing in this world is free. So this does come at a cost. In this case, it's a performance cost because the compiler is inserting a bunch of memory checks throughout my code. And so if we come down here and we look, let's say we take a look at the size of my binary, you can see, okay, we got a pretty good size binary here. If I come down here and I remove this and we make clean recompile, you can see, so like I have a much smaller binary at this point than if we come back here, add it back in. So we make clean, make compile again, and you can see, yeah. So you have a much larger binary that's being created and the size of this may vary by compiler. Like if we come in here and we say GCC and we recompile it, you know, now you're seeing, okay, so it's still bigger, but with GCC, it's not nearly as big as it was with Clang. This is just coming from the fact that these compilers are inserting these checks in different ways and Clang's probably including a bunch of code statically, maybe, I don't know. I'd have to look deeper into it, but the point is this will vary a bit by compiler, but either way, the code is a bit bigger. And if we timed it, you would see that the code is also a little bit slower because it's having to make these checks, you know, nothing's free. So what you often see in commercial code is that address sanitizer will be turned on during debugging. Now your debug builds will have this turned on because it gives you lots of really rich information about what your program's doing and what it's doing incorrectly while you are trying to figure things out. And then if you need that binary to be lean and mean and really small when you ship it out, then you can take this out in your release build. If you don't know what I'm talking about with debug and release builds, well, check out some of my, my build system, my make more complicated make videos. Um, I do talk about how to produce two different binaries for different purposes. I will drop a link down in the description for those videos as well but I hope you learned something new. I hope this helps some of you to be able to find your bugs more quickly, not be afraid of those nasty memory corruption bugs that can otherwise be a real pain to find with tools like Address Sanitizer. They're really not that bad. So I hope this helps. Hope you learned something new and until next week, I'll see you later.